Okay, now uh, December 17, 2022, almost uh, New Year's 2023, but not quite yet. And the war in Ukraine was started from February 24, um, 10 months ago. Uh, yeah, it was predicted in two hours will be taken over by or 48 hours or two days taken over by Putin and it fails until now so we've been ignoring the undemocratic pattern um, everywhere and it is a sign of a world peace that is failed so uh, now we scramble to free Ukraine from one man, megalomania, brain error. Or um, I think Putin has a, a brain disease. So after it's too late and uh, invaded for 10 months, it should be more priority for all of us for all the world or United Nations to defend the war at all costs. If it has to enact the Chechen rebellion to uh, create chaos in Kremlin, so be it. If the US has to stage the military weapon and might at Ukraine border just to uh, scare off Russian soldier, so be it. The invasion broke off at February 24, 2022. We're supposed to be uh, rescued by the world instantly before it drags on and systematically check up the prices and product scarcity all over the world and eventually brought the world recession and inflation unfortunate, uncontrollably. Is that necessary? That was my letter to uh, Joe Biden before the war broke off to shut down the war by pushing back the invasion at the Ukraine border or using the US military power and might just to deter Russian soldiers from inching in and avoid to the carnage. But at least the office replied, they consider my advice, but still the old officers at the White House are obsolete in thinking and thought the problem will go away. From then on, I had, uh, I had wrote three more advices letters in my email to the White House and finally they uh, stopped answering nor um, thanking my advice afterward about how to stop the war. So uh, they ignore my letter now. So what's the point in letter sending them some more email about how to stop the war in Ukraine? So since basically um, eight months ago, I stopped doing that. Uh, it's a traditional that I um, wrote to the U.S. president from Barack Obama until uh, Joe Biden about what's going on uh, with the world problem. So uh, Ukraine war basically only a Putin alone himself a kind of war against all Ukrainian, one person against Ukrainian, without the blessing of rational. Russian. So irrationality is shown by his corrupted brain that predicted taking over Ukraine in 48 hours in February 24, 2022. While the whole world, EU and USA, is strongly against it. Putin's brain is similar to Donald Trump. If he lost or get caught in a predicament, he will make matter worse. Unprovoked invasion 
versus uh, Ukraine or NATO as a threat. So uh, they think NATO as a threat while well, NATO doing nothing. They manufacture the threat. They have illusion. So as Donald Trump like they have illusion um, or alternative fact. So will there be a peace? Like if uh, the lost war in the city of Pucha, will he quit and cut loss or he will make matter worse? Just like Trump, a dictator brain, it's just like that. Will he accept it, the losing gracefully? Will he accept a peace? I think not possible. I think we all know not possible looking at the way Trump thinking. Uh, one problem after another problem, all he got to do is just create another worse problem. So get ready for more worse problem. That's how Trump works or Putin works because somehow the brain are mirror each other. So it is not hard to understand about it. Nothing complicated about this war or just simply a major Putin brain error only. More and more delusional leaders asking and advising a peaceful talk or um, saving face or of ram negotiation that disregarded um, Putin brain error. They keep searching for worsening situation every time, just like Donald Trump. Somehow these delusional world leaders keep forgetting from exact predictable repeating pattern that exactly mirroring Putin or they're mirroring each other and all dictator wanna be. So how to stop it? Do we need to wait for him to commit suicide or got a, a heart attack? Why? The majority of Russian consists of the executive system, Duma or parliamentary, uh, with just one single communist party, single monopoly, Gazprom or just one giant unopposed Gazprom, and one military are all in blindly following Putin without check and balance or they are in a post brain wash era by Putin propaganda. I mean, uh, it's like a machine, a propaganda machine. So it is not possible to let the system correct or work by itself. So nobody in this failed system will check or object it or stand up for Putin ever. They are all believe in Putin blindly just like 30% of American who believe in Trump. Even they think Trump is their messiah. So they think Putin is a messiah, some kind of a Christianity uh, misguided or error. Secondly, the only chance is to push Russian troops. So the second chance is to push the Russian troops out of the Ukraine border or create a, a notion or make belief or um, proofing by keeping on defeating the fails or inferior Russian military. This could only happen if Ukraine have the world support as if Ukraine were fighting for the world of a perfect people democracy against badly failed dictatorship. So it's just the only viable path to end the war. So how to end the war faster? Is it by sending many death squad to Kremlin in groups wave to get Putin? Or a multi-layer of five people every week and next week another five and next week another five squad that come to Moscow and keep sending more five people with multi-task specialists every week because the more weak they come, the more trained they were, the more specialists they were. The first week is the first lightweight, lightweight trained squad. 
The second will be more experience until the real professional squad they're able to eliminate the target which is put in brain the error to save many unnecessary war victims and carnage and or recruiting Russian or Chechen snipers as as we all know these military men are so corrupt they can be bought the cost of sending five mercenary or hiring a sniper from Chechen or Russian military will be very very cheap cheaper than Patriot or uh, any other um, heavily compared to the billion war in Ukraine right now and million deaths of women children from many random constant city bombing murder kidnap and rape so it will be able to prevent or stop the whole Ukraine carnage, mass murder and all that. Not to mention wasteful resources and dollars. And also famine that was created because no supply of grain and wheat from Ukraine. To Africa, to everywhere, to uh, children, to mothers. So they are starving and dying. So we tackle the problem at its very root, which is put in print and avoid killing other Russian for war that they did not even understand because they were brainwashed as a result. It was just only a um, special military operation for them because they were brainwashed. So killing them in the war unconsciously is almost sounds unjustified. So take the war to the very brain that caused all of this and can stop all of this carnage at once while humiliating defeat um, will not give them a very will give them a very doubtful but their corrupted military might and start respecting other countries peacefully so uh, so uh, giving them a humiliation defeat might give them the very doubtful role of their corrupt military might and start respecting other countries to create a world peace this smart logical war should also apply in a real battle. Do not wait to get shot idly, as they call it preemptive war, like George Bush says, it's preemptive war against terrorism. I know it sounds American, but it will save million lives. As of now, they prepare um, 1,000 to 200 troops better simulation in Belarus uh, with the border of Ukraine. It's a war game in Belarus right now. So there it is. You have 20 to uh, 200,000 soldiers are waiting for a smart, smart bomb in a building at night while they're sleeping beautifully. And uh, this is just a reminder the Russian and Belarus military are are badly flawed uh, military, badly flawed strategic military. They don't have no strategy. Not to mention the embarrassing, uh, very poor logistic support for the invasion. Um, it seems like more than 60 kilometers, all military vehicle and tanks are, were, were at stall stuck because Ukraine using uh, the mud to make them stuck and beside they're, they're out of gas. So unfortunately every Ukraine spokesperson never remember nor mention this very logistic uh, case that stalled Russian invasion as far as 20 miles long bumper to bumper, bumper to bumper tank hauled out of fuel, empty gas. 
So they still afraid, but they forgot this will happen again if they ever cross Belarus border. Well, this is for uh, Ukraine leadership. It's just a compelling case to get more assistance and fun as they are good at it. They're good at social media, they're good at um, fundraising. The whole Ukrainian defense and military are thinking of um, rather wait later on to shoot at them at the border, each one of 20 to uh, 20,000 to 200,000 soldiers is mind boggling. Why not just finish them up all? Why not just finish them all up while sleeping in the building in Belarus? At one strike drone at a certain GPS location. As easy as blowing up all 200 Wagner mercenaries in a hotel in Kativka uh, three days ago in Luhansk. As easy as that. Instead of waiting for them to come and attack, might as well get preemptive and attack them before they uh, blow them all up and cripple them before they come. So, uh, Putin lovers, Putin, I mean, uh, Putin loves management by conflict among military versus Wagner group. This Wagner was created by Putin and Yevgeny, Yevgeny Pergosin. This meant to match the Blackwater group of mercenaries owned by Eric Prince, which was um, subcontract of the military in Iraq during Iraq war. I uh, think they all, most of it dismantled right now. Uh, bombing a bomber in Russian airport that was done a couple of weeks ago, or since the war began basically, they've been bombing um, five places. Uh, it's to consider also bombing Russian military academy camp that educate or train the next soldiers that will invade Ukraine. They should consider to bomb the place that will eliminate at least 500 of them. We will also have a different result that needs to be weighted too. Not just bombing the plane that will bomb Ukraine, but also to facilitate the people and uh, all the mothers of war, uh, Babushka will get mad at Putin. Might be, but will it count? Because Putin will not listen to any of those. Like a couple of days ago, he's supposed to have a, a question and answer, Q&A with uh, uh, once a year. It's like a ceremony once a year that was held in the Kremlin, but they canceled because he's afraid of the questions. So which one is creating more consequential damage to stop the war? There is also a cheaper alternative if Ukraine afraid the consequence of being accused attacking Russian from the inside, from uh, attacking Russian at Russian um, inside Russian region. Again, Ukraine could always pay some corrupt Russian military to create chaos. Afraid of phobia against Russian colonialism is as a result of prolonged propaganda of Russian military might. It's been long Ukraine been under the thumb of Russian, so they all might have a, a phobia to do that. So whenever they attack Russian, they never admit it because they're scared to death that the Russia will punish them. But they get punished anyway, so <laughs> what's the point? <laughs> Might as well just say it. <laughs> and uh, somehow they're still in the uh, Soviet era, afraid to admit stuff, uh, not proud of what they do, because proud will make, uh, will push their morale somehow, but they avoid that. 
Christophobia, like I said. And our dictators love this propaganda result in creating phobia of their subject. They only fear at anybody who stand up. Or like uh, Nancy Pelosi said, they are just a five years old children bullies. They are afraid of their mothers referring to Trump. Whenever he uh, stand up for Trump, it's like a mother telling five years old kid to shut up and listen to their mom. It works somehow to Trump. Trump's care of Nancy Pelosi. So a, a smart word does not um, require to use a conventional word and invention uh, and invasion prevention should be uh, preferable than annihilate each other in unnecessary conventional war with million death, suffering and destruction. Is it necessary? Is it uh, likable? Is it fun like a battleground game? Although it might not sound fun like so it sounds like a avoiding to play a battleground game. So once again a war does not need a real battle, but a smart battle that calculate losses and mathematical simulation should be done. Imagine if Ukraine knew it for certain the Russian have start marching and approaching the border. They need to start making a real chaos and destruction behind the enemy lines. So to know the military in Belarus was crossing the pro-democracy protesters when uh, the uh, opposition was winning the vote in Belarus, Ukraine was sitting by uh, idly, not even come to rescue to the protesters or the winner of the election. So ignoring this democracy, ignoring support the democracy and not supporting democracy is consequential. So now Belarus is going after Ukraine. What if Ukraine helping the Belarus um, protesters and uh, aiding with guns and troops to Belarus to take side with the protesters and the winning, the winner of the election? Will this war be happening? Take place at all? I doubt it. So everything has to be well calculated to prevent. So basically democracy is to um, to um, sustain the world peace. Without democracy, there's not going to be any peace. So failing to rescue and aid the protesters in Belarus to uh, establish democracy is just big failures that invite this war. So fail to eliminate a potential threat. There you go. So this can be avoided actually a long, long time ago. So all nations cannot stand by and let dictators crossing its people as later on they will start attacking other nation. So there is the benefit of democracy as to have an everlasting peace on earth. Afraid and concerned about neighboring country development has never helped the situation at all. So actively and funded a liberal democracy in neighboring country is basically a very cheap defense budget. So if you want to put in a defense budget, so be it. And it's very cheap. Not as smart as you have to have all your citizens uh, wiped out by the bomb from the invaders. So as there will be no threat from a democratic nation. So usually democratic nations, they don't attack anybody because they are busy doing democracy uh, as fun in their own nation. Why would they go after other nation? So updating on invading area that 
used to be almost all Ukraine, now is only 15% or less. So it used to invade Ukraine at all sectors, all region. Now, the Russian only will keep 15% or less, uh, basically lesser and lesser every day because Ukraine is always winning in the battle. It's not only because they um, equipped by NATO, but also their fighting spirit to defend their own country. It's their sovereigns. It's their own freedom. They don't want to live under a tyranny or dictators or colonialism. So, um, and Russian military force simply not showing any winning chances. Does that mean Putin losing face and need a saving face or Putin need a, an offering? Like uh, all the leaders like uh, Emmanuel Macron from France asking to give Putin an offering. So we need to go back and uh, consider, will Trump feel like losing face? The answer is no such a thing. In the mind of brain error of Trump and Putin, as a megalomania, um, it's kind of brain defect with the megalomania. It's, they, uh, they never realized that they lost the election. They never realized that uh, they lost the war. So they keep on creating an alternative fact that they're winning the war, that Trump is winning the election, which is basically not true. <laughs> they're delusional or megalomania or uh, you can call it psycho. Yeah, it's kind of psycho. And nuclear threat can be considered just like one of those bully tactics using a corrupt um, corrupt bomb made, a bomb made of corrupt action that will fail miserably. So do not be afraid with a nuclear bomb that is corrupted. When they made it, the uranium might be downgraded just to make money. Or they steal the uranium, supposed to be a 50 gram uranium, the uh, 40 grams they sell it to Iran for profit or corrupt action. So then the bomb will not be deadly. And do we have to guess Putin will or will not use the nuke or dirty bomb? In fact, no one knows. So the important thing is we have to keep monitoring their um, silo through our um, satellite, their movement, and get ready to eliminate to silos using small dirty uh, nuke ICBM. Losing in the battle over and over is beneficial to crush, you know, when the Russian soldier is losing battle over and over, it's very good and beneficial to crush their hyper morale. So you need a check to their hyper morale that they are just nobody. They're not a superior power. And in the futures, they will believe that war is illogical and it is the worst choice to anything ever. War on civilian as an easy alternative, but uh, could also be consequential as they will have to pay for it in jail as a mass murderer, a disgrace to humanity. World support, unceasingly knowing they just becoming the next target of, so the world support, the world support unceasingly, it's because they know they will become the next target of invasion, of the military invasion or cyber hacking. So, this keyword, 
that most older professors that making speech on YouTube or on a TV channel or media or any other world analyst, expert, forget, keep saying the West will get tired of funding Ukraine after knowing the Ukraine war is their war too. So it is possible, impossible for Polish not to help Ukraine because Polish is also afraid. Germany also afraid that Russia might come to their doorstep. So Ukraine is the front line. So no matter what, they will do at all costs to help Ukraine. To stop it before it become a meat grinder in their own backyard. So uh, why are they keep saying these stupid remarks? The West will get tired and stop funding and supporting Ukraine. Silly. Or they say, they say that in support of their MAGA party stand or taking side or infatuated with the communist regime or they want to be a communist or they want to be a dictator like, like Russia, like Putin. Uh, lately, Biden agree on delivering some Patriot and other high-tech war tools needed to uh, rush in as to speed up in ending the war. And the new smart guided bomb device is a breakthrough versus trial and error hitting using random missiles that is wasteful in resources and funding. So right now they just keep sending um, all kind of uh, bullets and missiles that is random. Either from old missile from Poland, old missile from Latvia, but it's a dumb missiles. So Washington is trying to, uh, to uh, hack it and uh, hack it to, uh, to get a GPS locators. That way it's more like guided missiles that will go to its precise target. So that way there is no more um, wasteful missiles, no more wasteful funding. So when they hit the target and that's it, and no need to have a civilian also as a victim. Hope all of this will end the war, as there is no sign of inside fighting within Russian elite or the street protest anymore. We don't see Russian elite fighting. We don't see uh, street protest anymore. Uh, most elite that is that disagree with Putin has been killed, and most of the protest has been jailed and fined. And uh, most of the finger ran away. They ran to uh, Georgia. They ran to uh, Kazakhstan. They ran to everywhere. Armenia and stuff like that. Which is those countries needed because they need some uh, professional people, high tech people. Even though it's a, it's been a humiliation defeat after defeat, in like a, a reality show. At their face, for all the world to see, and we can see the glimpse. So we can see the glimpse of a bright world peace, on the horizon. We are all happy when they defeat it. It's like we see a bright light, ahead of us. So uh, as soon as this megalomania dictator is defeated or pushed back at the internationally recognized legal border of Ukraine, we can say Slava Ukraina. That way, not only Slava Ukraina, but also Slava the world democracy. That's it for this week, folks. Goodbye.
Thank you for watching and listening.